I'm Bruce Bugbee, president of Apogee Instruments, and today I'd like to give you a brief overview of how we measure surface temperature. Now this is non-contact surface temperature, so it's done with Apogee infrared radiometers. I'm joined in this effort by Mark Blomquist. He's worked, he and I have worked together on this for many, many years to refine this measurement. It's a powerful measurement and yet quite challenging. And what I especially want to do in this talk is describe what the Apogee Instruments sensor does. It looks like this. Here it is with the, the uh, sensor compared to much lower cost sensor. Here's a, here's a little one that's, you can buy these for under $100. What's the difference in uh, research grade and hobby grade? And this is a lot like a, uh, taking a picture with your cell phone camera versus a professional grade camera. When you need accurate measurements, you need research grade sensors. So there are seven things in here that I'm gonna quickly go through that establish a research grade sensor. The first one obviously is accuracy. And accuracy, it isn't just a matter of simple accuracy because if this is the difference between the sensor and the target, any sensor can typically get that right. If the sensor is 75 degrees Fahrenheit or, or 77 Fahrenheit or 25C and the target is also 77 or 25C, it's not that hard to measure it. Now try to measure a hot surface or a very cold surface with a cheaper sensor and they have significant errors. So this is the temperature difference down here. Temp diff. And we're going to put plus 30 degrees C. And over here we're going to put minus 30 degrees C. And this is the error. So here's a zero error. This is a low cost or a hobby grade sensor. The error looks like that. And these errors up here can be five degrees C as these temperatures reach the extremes. So how good is an Apogee sensor? The Apogee sensor comes in right along here. The accuracy specification for Apogee is plus or minus 0 0.2 degrees C, and that's over the entire temperature range. That's an enormous difference. People just do this and they say, well, this is almost as good as the Apogee. Yes, but the, you haven't tested it in extreme conditions. So accuracy is a big deal. Number two, field of view. All of these sensors, if we put a sensor right here, have a cone-shaped field of view. Draw it like this. A low-cost sensor has an enormous field of view. It sees the edges, it sees the sky, it sees the ground, it averages everything. If you really wanted to average everything, that'd be fine, but typically what you really want to see is a small area in there. So the Apogee sensors have variable fields of view, but they're typically much tinier, depending on the type of sensor, so you can pinpoint the temperature of a spot rather than average a big area. This causes a big change in the signal, and it's one of the reasons that Apogee's worked hard to get this. Some of the Apogee sensors have a rectangular field of view. Depends on what you're looking at, so there's multiple options for field of view, but that's a big difference between low cost and research grade sensors. Third, spectral sensitivity. Here's a graph of long wave radiation. Long wave radiation. And that typically goes from about 4,000 nanometers, and there's a broken axis here, all the way out to 100,000 nanometers. 
The radiation from a typical black body looks something like that. A low-cost sensor integrates all of this, which would be okay, except there are huge windows in here where water vapor in the air absorbs radiation. So a low-cost sensor partly measures the air temperature and partly measures the target temperature, particularly as you get farther away from the target. For this reason, Apogee sensors, and I'm going to show this in green, measure only what's called the atmospheric window, A-T-M-O-S window. In this range right here, water vapor does not interfere with this. The air is transparent when you use a research-grade Apogee sensor because they're limited to this window right here. So again, it's a smaller signal, so it's harder to measure, but it's important not to measure the air. Number four, response time. If this is time here, let me get that there, a, a signals can look like this. A cheaper signal, and it's a lot of noise, if, if, and, and this might be plus one degree and minus one degree, and zero is right here in this. So if this signal is bouncing around, what do you do? You do a running average, and I'll show that in here in green. You might have a running average that looks like that, that's much more accurate, but you have to wait to get your data. You have to leave it on there for several seconds to, to average this. Apogee sensors have much smaller noise over time, so they don't need to do a running average. It, it can make measurements over short time intervals. Much faster response time for many applications that's critical. Number five, emissivity. This is a complex topic, but if this is a surface, say the ground, not all of the radiation coming off the ground is emitted. Typically, for many surfaces, we'll say 90% is emitted, and this is a parameter called uh, usually a lowercase e. When, and for a surface like this, what happens to the other 10%? That's reflected. So it's averaging, in this room it'd be averaging the ceiling temperature with the floor temperature. And it's a weighted to the floor temperature. Cheaper sensors don't account for this. Apogee mathematically can account for this and correct for problems with emissivity. We'll talk more about this in a more detailed seminar, but this is can lead to significant errors if it's not properly corrected for in the sensor, and Apogee sensors allow for that. Number six, durability. This, a sensor like this, is not designed for continuous outdoor field use. The Apogee sensors are designed for year after year measurements in the field. So, if you make the investment in a good sensor, you sure want it to work, and you want it to work reliably through harsh weather conditions. And the seventh and final one is the output of the sensor. You have to get the signal accurately to a data logger. Um, so this is shielded twisted pair cable with the multiple output options. This comes with SDI-12 options. It's soon to come with Modbus options, um, Bluetooth options. There's many ways to get the signal from this to a data logger. Cheaper sensors um, read it on the sensor, but, but that's it. So those are seven reasons that research-grade sensors give you better accuracy and better long-term stability than the much lower-cost sensors. Thanks for listening.